Hello, hello, and hello. This is me doing my part two of my Ghostbusters rummage through my bric-a-brac and this and that. So uh, in part one, I went through most of like the toys that I had, uh, little bits that I have with me. Some of it is still in storage in another house somewhere up north. But, um, hello everyone, um, but uh, for now I'm going to go through box number two because box number two has some of the, what I like to think is pricier stuff. It means it's less rare to be honest, but there are some wonderful interesting things in here that I want to share with you. On this Ghostbusters Day, June 8th in 1984, Ghostbusters was released and changed my life forever. Probably, probably for the better, could have been for the worse. Obsessions. They're a thing now. So, um, hello to everyone who's joining me on the live Facebook, because this is going out live as I'm doing this. Uh, hopefully I'll have a decent enough connection for you to last for whatever this, well, however long this takes, really. But I'm gonna start with this. This is by no means um, the rarest, most precious thing in the world, but it means a lot to me. So, um, a few years ago now, I want to say it was around about 2013, 2012, uh, a friend of mine, a comedian called Imran Youssef, did a pilot for BBC Three called The Imran Youssef Show. And I got to be in it because he wrote a Ghostbusters sketch for me to be in. So uh, we went up to Scotland, to Glasgow, and um, filmed the sketch. It was a nice little silly sketch. It didn't really make sense out of context. I will put a link in the description box below so you can see that. But um, it was nice, it was a callback to another character he'd been doing, one who runs away at the slightest sense of danger, even though he strong like bull. Um, but the backside of it, the backside? The upside of it <laughs> was that I got to have my first ever Ghostbusters uniform made for me. So there it is, here it is, let me just uh, flip it around because I believe I can do that. Here we go. So here it is, let me just get it and put it down. This is my jumpsuit from Ghostbusters, our little sketch that we did. It got scuffed up and made to look dirty. I've since washed this, but when we shot it, it was um, it was meant to be mucky and a bit slimy, but I've cleaned it up since then. Now, the reason why I'm not wearing this today is because when I filmed this, I was, let's be honest, a lot younger. Well, a bit younger. And a little bit thinner. And so when I tried to get into it now... Uh, it's like a very, it's like a very tight onesie. And let me just put it that way. No one wants to see that area in close up. I can assure you no one wants to. So I got my own little badge. You know, as far as I know, it's just like the one in the movie. Now we couldn't obviously use the Ghostbusters logo for it. So we had a, a new one made up just for the sketch. It looks like that. You see what they've done there? They've got the ghost and he's pulling a cheeky little face. So uh, it's legally fine to use on camera at the BBC. Now, at the end of the day of the sketch, once we'd all finished, I got a proton pack and everything made up for me. You know, replica didn't look like the real thing, but it was close enough uh, to make the sketch work. Um, I basically took that home with me. I shouldn't have, apparently. It was a naughty thing to do. So I nicked it from the BBC. BBC, if you want it back, you can suck a fat one. Even though it doesn't fit me, I'm never giving it away because it has precious memories. So there you go. That's my first one. Again, I'll put the description in the description box below. I'll put uh, where that sketch is because I think it's on my solo channel from years ago that I don't really use anymore. Everything now goes through Cheap Show. So uh, there you go. I can show you the sketch later. What else? So little thing, uh, the Bear Workshop. When Ghostbusters came out last year, had a promotion where you could dress up a ghost, uh, a teddy bear as a ghostbuster. I didn't realise this when it was given to me because it was given to me by uh, my fiancé's parents as a Christmas present. But I didn't realise that the bear was actually meant to be the ghost from the logo because of the eyes and the nose and the little wisp on the top. So it's, it's, a, it's a teddy bear of the ghost. That's exciting, isn't it? Um, on the foot, and look, it's got a little proton pack. I love this. I mean, it always comes off all the time. But, uh... There you go, proton pack, and look, if you uh, press the gun, the proton, uh, the pro oh god, why do I not know the words to these things? The neutrino wand, I believe some people call it. Oh come on, I've already had it a year, it can't be broke already, I hardly touch it. Oh, suck a dick, it goes, you know how it goes, god damn it, and then the hand itself plays a theme. There we go.
Yeah, all right, we, we know what the song sounds like anyway. So there you go, lovely little plushy teddy bear. I love it. I, I, I'd be lying also if I said um, that I haven't slept with it once or twice during the cold, dark night to the soul. Let's try this again. Yeah, totally worth that wait. So, um, what else? I showed you this last time. This is the clock I made for uh, my GCSE. I don't know, I guess it was wood building class. I don't know, but it's a clock that I made of Ghostbusters 2. It's funny, even though I don't like Ghostbusters 2 as much as the original, which is fair enough, I still love the logo and I don't know why. Something really poppy and cartoony about the logo I really adore. Uh, hello, Angel Rose. Hello, Richard Bale. Pew, Jew, Snip, Scruffy, the real OG. All those people, thank you for joining me. Keep giving your comments in. I'll comment them as I see them. But uh, yeah, that's my little clock. I love that. Um, again, someone got me this as well. It is a little plushy Slimer. Uh, it was, I don't think it's anything to do with the Builder Bear factory people, but it's lovely all the same. For a ghost who'd rather just be snacking, Slimer causes more than its fair share of mischief. Oh, Slimer, your popularity ruined the real Ghostbusters cartoon show for all of us. Saying that, though, the car as a character, he's nowhere near as bad as Snarf, right, when it comes to the new schmooze of the world. And he, in, in many episodes, you know, he comes across as fine, cute, adorable in many respects. However, I would argue there are one too many plots in the real Ghostbusters cartoon which involved Slimer touching something he shouldn't have and letting ghosts free. And frankly... It's just, yeah, Snarf was the worst. Snarf. Suck a dick, Snarf. So there's Slimer. Not the very worst one of the real Ghostbusters merchandise, but you can see how he became a little bit of an uh, anchor. Um, all I made was a very boxy table. I wish I could make a table, to be honest. What do I think of the new Playmobil Ghostbusters range? Awesome. I just can't afford it. And if I was going to get it, I wouldn't get the firehouse. I'd probably just get myself an Ecto-1. I kind of like the Ecto-1. I've got enough firehouses. Look, see? Firehouse, and I got my real Ghostbusters firehouse as well. So I'd, I think I'd rather have the Ecto-1. That's what I would do. What else is next now? Okay, there's this. Let's have a little look at this. This I got from, is it Zavi? When you pre-ordered the DVD of the uh, Ant of the Core movie, uh, you got this as a pre-order gift. It is the Marshmallow Man. It's very nice. I've heard some people complained about it because it's a bit too fragile and a lot of people um, it broke for them, which is fair enough. Uh, however, it's been fine so far. It's a nice little model. Not too much. It would have been nice to have a little car maybe there that it crushed or the four action figures of the Ghostbusters there firing at it. That would have been nice. But as it is, it's a lovely little thing. Not too bad. Does the face look odd to you though? Just a little bit odd. Like it's gone a little bit kind of ghibli. Anyway, it's fine. Stay puffed. Uh, right, so the DVDs, the Blu-rays. I've got tons of these. We're about to see a few more as well. Uh, this is a blind bag toy someone gave me. I'm not a huge fan of blind bags. I think they're a waste of bloody money by and large. Um, what else? Um, except the most recent episodes of Cheap Show. What's wrong with the recent Cheap Show podcast episodes? They're fine. Yeah, they're fine. Shut up. <laughs> so this is Kevin from uh, Answer the Call. And it's cute. You know, he's Kevin because, you know, he wants to be a Ghostbuster. That's fine. However, get your continuity right because look on the back. He's wearing he's wearing the original Ghostbusters Proton Pack. Well, he really should have the new one, which I still love. If I'm going to get a Proton Pack made, a brand new, proper big one, replica movie, I would probably get the new packs. I kind of took quite a liking to them, but these are fine. I'm not going to say no if anyone gets me a proton pack. Hashtag get Paul Gannon a proton pack. Uh, so there you go. Nice little thing. Not the end of the world, but get your facts right, mate. Honest to God. At least it's not 11.30 in the morning. You're right there, mate. Ne We're never doing 11.30 in the morning again at Comic-Con. It's a waste of bloody time. Next. My Ghostbusters build box includes activity book. I didn't know this was even out. Uh, but last year, just before Christmas, these are all in Tesco's and Sainsbury's in the UK. And basically, uh, it's a box, as you, as you can see, that comes with a little book, which I'll show in a minute. But ultimately, on the inside, which I haven't made yet, because I guarantee I'll fuck it up if I try and make this, you get um, a nice little fold-out, um, cardboard fold-out, origami-esque cardboard character build where you can make your own Slimer, 
Look, teeth, lovely. Uh, look, that doesn't seem like it's cut out right as well. It looks like the teeth go way over the cutout there. Anyway, so you get Slimer, Big Mouth, fair enough. Proton Pack for Ganon, yes, let's make that a hashtag because there are children dying in the world and what everyone should do instead is get me a Proton Pack. But, you know, there you go. Slimer, 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 yes. And then we get into the meat of it. We get into the build of Ecto-1 itself. And again, I'd like to make it, but I kind of feel like I'd fuck it up if I do it because I'm not the most patient and delicate of people when it comes to building things like this. But it's all very nicely put together, you know? The wheels and the thing and the what's it, and it's all very nice, but I guarantee I'll build it. It will look nice for a week, and then when I try and move house, it will be flattened to a horrible, paperly clump. However, what's in the model fun book? Obviously, in the book itself, uh, I think it tells you how to build said... Yeah, look, see, it's all there. Make a horrific Ecto Slimer abomination. John, I could do that, but that would also involve skill and talent and patience. Things I do not have. Um, so, here's how to make Slimer. See, it all looks very ornate. Lots of folding and sliding in. And Also, I don't really like the design of Slimer there. I mean, I think this is the design that comes basically from uh, Ghostbusters 2. I'm not sure. So, you know, it's all nice and dandy. Ecto-1, again, the same thing. Looks very, very complicated. And it does look like a giant bell end, Sailor Cosmos. You're right. A giant papery bell end with a big tongue. Now that's a nightmare maker. And then at the back of the book, you get a little maze. Of what's the difference thing? So it just fills itself out with what you'd expect to get in the back of an annual. You know? It's all fine and dandy. So, okay, who said that? Okay, who brought the dog? Well, that's obviously uh, Lewis. Who said, are you the key master? I'm going to go ahead and say that was Dana there. He slimed me. Peter, you've got to try this poll. That was Ray. We got one, Janine, and choose the form of the destructor. That would be Zul herself. Or Goza. How's that work? I don't know. Um, voiced by Ivan Reitman. So there you go. It's a nice little book. Again, I don't think I'll go ahead and ruin it with my, with my skills. Who are you going to choose? When slime is part of the job, you get pretty... Used to the gross side of the ghost wheel. Think you can handle it? Pick a paranormal punishment in each scenario. Get chased by a terror dog, but you manage to escape or get slimed from head to foot by Slimer. I think I'd rather get slimed by Slimer. I might. I might get an erection. You just don't know. As far as I know, I've never had an erection being chased by a dog. I need to stop. Paul, what is it about Ghostbusters that you love so much? It's a very good question. I mean, when I did my solo show about my Ghostbusters obsession, how it led to me hunting ghosts all around the world, I put a link into a version of that show underneath as well. It just came from the fact that it just spoke to me. I always kind of liked ghosts and ghouls and monsters and things like that when I was a kid. And then Ghostbusters came along and I saw it on um, a TV show in the UK, Saturday morning show called Going Live. And there was a trailer for it, the very famous scene with uh, Slimer sliming Peter Venkman for the first time. And I was completely sold on the idea of men catching ghosts. And I think that was it, really. Um, so I don't know. But it, 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 it's never... It, it's always, I mean, the logo is beautiful. I remember the logo being one of the first things I ever saw. And that caught my attention. But it was never Star Wars for me. Star Wars does nothing for me at all. I'm not big on Marvel. Don't care for most sci-fi. But if I have to pick my geek pick, it is going to be Ghostbusters. It really is. Ghostbusters is just the thing that I love. So, you know, Star Wars can suck a dick. Hashtag Star Wars suck a dick. Right, next box. This is the big one. Let's crack this open. So there's a lot of stuff in here. We're going to go through this as best we can. So, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but here we go. Ladybird, book of the film. Now, in the UK, Ladybird made books for children. Sometimes based on movies, often just like little short stories. Usually, I Thing, Thomas the Tank Engine, things like that were part of its repertoire. But this is the kids' book version of Ghostbusters 2. And um, it's cute. It's well made, well designed. You know, and I like the fact that it's the most child friendly. I'm never a Transformers fan, by the way. Um, what is Ghostbusters? Get out. Get out. Great job. <laughs> right, so. Um, but people soon forgot about the Ghostbusters. Then they thought, oh, that's really sad. Did you ever have one of the mini Ghostbusters 2 Coke cans? Yes, that allegedly contained the ghost. They, they, Yeah, they did. I do have one, not here. But I have one. 
Um, it came with a, at the time, Wimpy or maybe Burger King. It was a little Happy Meal box and it came with a little um, little scroll to say you were an official Ghostbuster and a little tin can that said, do not open or Ghost will escape. And so you opened it and the ghost escaped, but it left a little glow-in-the-dark residue at the bottom. It wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but it was nice. I do have that somewhere. So there you go. Naked baby picture. I just started working on a Star Wars-centric channel, so you better keep quiet. Although I dislike Star Wars. <gasps> Working for the enemy. Uh, does the fact that Ghostbusters are basically cack-handed chances endear them to you? It does for me. Yeah, I like the fact that they're not great at what they do and they kind of cheat their way through. I've always preferred heroes in fantasy that aren't great at their job. The greatest example I can give is Casey Ryback in <laughs> the film uh, Under Siege and Under Siege 2. Because he just wades through the bad guys and kills them and it's dead easy. And I think, well, where's the peril? I mean, in bloody um, Under Siege 2... Steven Seagal is thrown from a train, gets all, you know, thrown down a hillside, gets a car, jumps back in, and his black suit hasn't got a single fucking fleck of dirt on it. I'm saying it's got poor connection. I'm hoping that's not having a massive effect on you right now. But anyway, there you go. And it abbreviates the book into lovely little pictures and things. Keeps it simple. Lovely, lovely. Um... Christ almighty Paul, how long must we wait? I don't know. What are you waiting for? If the connection is poor, I do apologise. Um, I'm reasonably far away from my Wi-Fi box. But there you go. Ladybug, book of the film too. So in we have Ghostbusters, Larry Mills, uh, you know, just the novelization of the movie came out not too long after because back in the day, you couldn't wait a month or two and it would be on Netflix. You had to wait years before you could see your favourite movies again after the cinema. So things like this and this for what kept fans alive, you know? And the great thing about this Ghostbusters 2 book is that it has a few scenes um, that were cut out of the DVD. You can see a few of them on the Blu-ray for Ghostbusters 2, things like Lewis Tully trying to catch Slimer. Uh, but there are loads of other things in here as well that were just forgotten, like there's a scene in the film that we all remember where Ray gets uh, hypnotised by the painting of Vigo, and then nothing really comes of it until the finale. Uh, however, there was a scene cut in the film where Ray is possessed just after the scene in the museum, and then tries to drive Ecto-1 into a tree. And so I think it's Winston or Peter who has to punch him out to save all their lives. So that's all those little chapters are in the book, you know. What's this? To Gannon, happy birthday to you. Sorry, can't be there. Thinking of you, loves and quotes, Trodus. Oh, that's my friend Lucy Trod, who is now in the amazingly successful theatre show, Showstoppers. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? So there you go, novelisation, novelisation. Um, so... Soundtrack. What do you expect? It's the soundtrack. This is one of the very first soundtracks that I got. Oh, stamps. I mean, literally, when CD players were brand new in the 80s, this was one of the first ones my mum got me to enjoy the CD player with. Nice, you know. Soundtrack. How much did it cost in fares? I don't think it was £72. I will say that. I don't believe that's the correct price. But it was re-released later on with additional tracks including Disco Inferno, the 10, 11-minute version, fucking aura, uh, that appears in the scene with um, Lewis Tully at the party. So, you know, worth the extra buy. I have got the new soundtracks elsewhere, just not here, unfortunately. What have I got? Okay, so Ghostbusters 2. I, the, I meant the longest time, longest time I couldn't find the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. Um... And I regretted it because I remember trying to buy it and it wasn't there anymore on Double H Smiths and I was really upset. And so a friend of mine copied it onto a cassette for me and for the longest time that cassette was my only version of Ghostbusters um, 2. This is not the best soundtrack. You get too much Bobby Brown on it for my liking. Although you do get Run the MC's version, which is fine. Oingo Boingo, the band Danny Elfman was in. And weirdly, Elton John. And then Flip City, which was a very mediocre take on the scene where ghosts take over New York. And unfortunately, rather than having magic, which worked, they went with Flip City. Do you like extreme Ghostbusters? I do. I do. I've not seen that much of it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, long story short, I have a vaguest memory of uh, extreme Ghostbusters. So I'm due a catch up. I've seen one or two. I've seen uh, the boys are back in town or whatever it's called, back in the saddle, which was the two part episode, which was about meeting the old and the new. So what else have I got in here? The very first VHS I ever bought. And again, what do you expect? It's Ghostbusters. Oh, the world's most successful comedy as when this was released. 
And I think that's where I first heard the term superstars of the supernatural. The supernatural spectacular. Oh, look at that. Look at that. 1984. Oh. It's not the anime. I have seen both porn versions of Ghostbusters. One's called Nutbusters and one's called, I think, just Ghostbusters Triple X. And you'd be surprised how easily Ghostbusters is pornified. O obvious example, are you the gatekeeper? Are you the key master? Yes, yeah, suck my dick. So, you know, that's it in a nutshell. What else have I got? Okay, when the DVDs first came out in America, I was living in America at the time. So these were the covers of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. I think they're ugly as fuck, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of the design of these DVDs. But you've got to admit, the DVD features on the first film were pretty fantastic. You know, you've got the commentary at the time. Back in the day when DVDs, they would basically say, here's your extra features. Menu. Scene select. That's it. I mean, that's what you basically get on Bloody Ghostbusters 2. You get trailers, you get widescreen and full screen. That was when we were breaking slowly into widescreen acceptance. Have you seen the documentary Ghost Heads on Netflix? Yes, I have. I have a story about that. I was meant to be in it. And I spent a couple of hundred quid filming my solo show. That was promised would be in it. And then new producers took over the Netflix documentary and wanted all of that out so it could focus on Tom and Peter Mosen as the big ghost heads. And so I wasted quite a lot of money filming my solo show. That was in the documentary. Very pissed off about that. Right, what else have we got in here? Ah, so this is by Tokyo Pop. This is Ghostbusters manga called Ghost Busted. I'm not a He-Man fan. No, sorry, Angel. Um, again, it's just a, a manga take on the Ghostbusters franchise. So there are numerous stories in here by different artists with different Ghostbusters adventures. And um, it's a westernised, so you're reading it front to back, not back to front as you're meant to read manga. But it's beautifully uh, designed. Some good stories in there. Some a bit flippant, some a bit heavier. Very manga-esque. I mean, I love it. Some nice stuff in there. I can't even remember where I saw this or got this, but I must have come across it when I lived in America. Must have. Some lovely stuff in there. So that's my Ghostbusters manga. Ooh, indeed. Um, okay, a few of these things don't really count, but I'll show them anyway. So this is a magazine called Serial Geek. It's a magazine all about um, Saturday morning cartoons, basically. And there were two issues that's focused uh, on Ghostbusters. Um, do you think you'll ever write the book you talked about on the Barshans podcast? I'd like to. I'm still thinking about it. Um, what would the Ghostbusters answer the call? Outrage. I'd like to chart that. I would like to chart how Ghostbusters 3 became Ghostbusters answer the call and all the fallout since. Because, I mean, to be honest, the most disappointing thing about it all was not the film, because I love the film, frankly, and not the fact that it wasn't a huge success, because, you know, what films need to be a huge success to be well-loved. Think of The Thing, or think of The Shawshank Redemption, two films that were massive flops. Both films were hated, became loved on VHS, became loved later on down the line. Um... Same for It's a Wonderful Life. Film flopped when it first came out. People didn't like it, and now it's a Christmas staple. So I'm not a huge fan of this instant knee-jerk reaction to modern films. It takes a time for them to uh, uh, ferment, I guess, and become proper classics. And I do think Paul Feig's film has a chance of doing it. It's just, I think the saddest thing, the most disappointing thing, was the fan reaction. Some fans were like, oh, it wasn't for me, that's fine. And some fell in love with it, and new audiences fell in love with it. But ultimately... The fans who are on there, who are basically saying the most vile things to Paul Feig and the cast, it's sad. It's a, At the end of the day, it's a fucking film, right? A nice little throwaway adventure with people chasing ghosts. And there are people out there saying the most disgusting things, all to protect their precious childhood. Well, you can suck it. You can all suck it. What's your favourite Ghostbusters video game? We're going to get to that, hopefully. I think I've put it in there. If not, I'll talk about it. But anyway, Serial Geek magazine talked about... Um, uh, talked about Saturday morning cartoons and in one of them they talk about uh, Ghostbusters I mean, it's a great magazine anyway I don't think they make it anymore but um, even if they don't there we go look at this beautifully made out the original real Ghostbusters this is an article about the original pilot of Ghostbusters uh, for the cartoon series that was made uh, very similar uh, to what they used in the title sequence but ultimately it goes into a little bit of a um, a little bit of detail about the animation styles and the drawings and how it was a bit more um, uh, faithful to the original film design. 
Also talks about the HP Lovecraft connection to Ghostbusters, which is a whole thing in itself. I could go on for years about how uh, Ghostbusters, the movie, is practically a comedy version of any HP Lovecraft story. Um, Serial Geek, um, I believe this article also goes into Ghostbusters stuff as well, but also, in a very cheeky, chappy way, talks about um, the Filmation Ghostbusters as well, which is a very has a very interesting history. Uh, and the reason why Real Ghostbusters is called Real Ghostbusters. Uh, I could tell you and bore you with all those details, but it's all out there. But it's fascinating. Filmation did a sitcom called Ghostbusters in the 70s. And when they made to make the movie, they had to talk to Universal to actually license the phrase Ghostbusters. So for the longest time during the shoot, they didn't know if it was going to be called Ghostbusters. Shivers, a magazine I used to write for. And watch this. 2000 AD. Shaun of the Dead. I was in Shaun of the Dead. If I mention that, maybe that's another episode. So, uh, okay, where are we? 25 minutes, bloody Nora. I thought I'd get through this quite quickly. Ghostbusters International, the humorous horror role-playing game. I will say this, I have never played this with another human being. All I have is the pretty battered box, a crap real Ghostbusters wind sock. Fuck me. Uh, everyone remembers Short Circuit. Johnny Five is alive and features quite a few racist characters. Uh, so, you know, it's a role-play game similar to Dungeons & Dragons, but you play as Ghostbusters. Uh, online, you can get packs, which allows you to play it right now. I've never gotten around to playing this, and it's my dream one day to do it with real human beings. But effectively, you know, it's a role-play game. You set up your own Ghostbusters franchise, and you catch ghosts. And there's a ghost master and all those kind of things as well. Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters starring in Ghostbusters 2, the movie, um, by Marvel. Marvel in the UK uh, had the license to the real Ghostbusters comic books, because I think it was WoW Comics in America. I might be wrong about that. Um, but anyway, they serialised it and then turned it into a, I guess you could call it a paperback. But it basically, it's the whole of Ghostbusters 2, as reimagined, with the real Ghostbusters cast. But as a result, here's what I'm talking about. So, you know, Ray... Sees Vigo gets possessed. What, 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 what? And then later on, he's all angry because of the mood slime makes him angry and he's driving recklessly, driving through Central Park like a crazy thing. Oh no, Ray's gone mad. They're heading towards a tree. Winston hats to deck Ray. They bash Ecto 1 into a tree. I would love to have seen that if they filmed it. I'm not actually sure if footage exists. I know. Footage does exist because in the montage sequence in the middle of Ghostbusters 2, there is a weird scene where uh, Ecto-1 is driving erratically and you see Peter on the inside looking perturbed. So it does exist in some respect. And look, as I say, there are scenes there with uh, Lewis trying to catch Slimer. Again, on the Blu-ray, you can get a few of those scenes without a lot of the CG work done. I say CG work, but you know what I mean. Effects work. Oh, wow. Okay, I know what this is. When I did my first ever version of the Solo Show, these were my notes. So bloody hell, these were my original Ghostbusters Solo Show notes. Talking about the film and the logic and everything. Deleted scenes. It was more of a kind of lecture than a comedy show. Yeah, we might do the RPG one day. That might be nice. Maybe one day uh, we'll do that. Me, Stuart. I know a few other people want to do it as well. Uh, here is the out-of-the-box rules for the Ghostbusters International. Um... Premier Magazine, when they did their first exclusive look at the Ghostbusters movie. I think when it was like 25 years old. So, Christ, fast forward eight years. And this magazine is now old already. Bear with me, I'm holding my phone and doing this at the same time. Where is it? Where is the article about Ghostbusters? Because they're all old and shit. Where is it? Page 80. Oh my God. 80, what? Eight. No, that's 60. Sorry, I, I have a problem with page counts, apparently. Oh, God almighty. Here we go. Of Marshmallow and Men. So there you go, it's the first kind of retrospective of the movie at the time. Some nice little pictures. Certainly pictures I've not seen before or since in other pieces of work. That's Ghostbusters 2. But, you know, nice little article, bring you up to speed. One of the first times Ghostbusters really got, I kind of, I suppose, 
its dues in terms of cinema legend. Because, you know, I mean, the, the thing is, what people don't realise is that for most of the 80s, it was kind of an also-ran success. It was a huge success, but other films came and went, Indiana Jones, Groundlands, all these kind of things, Back to the Future became more popular, and it wasn't really until the 25th anniversary when people started going, oh yeah, Ghostbusters is a bit of a fucking classic. Get Guru Larry to play with it, you too. Maybe. The thing is, with these, they're really time intense. If you spend 25 hours reading the rules and then you spend one hour playing it, so it's likely we'll do it. Right. Let's get through these quicker. Ghostbusters SFX magazine in the UK did Ghostbusters magazine, a nice collection of all, um, all Ghostbusters stuff ever. It's just a really good magazine that I was pissed off I didn't get to write for, really. But, you know... You can't have everything, Paul. You can't be the world's greatest expert on Ghostbusters, even though you wish you were. Um, but it's a great little magazine. In fact, if you can get your hands on it on eBay or Amazon, I recommend it. There's some great, great stuff. And it goes over everything. It goes to, um, you know, the extreme Ghostbusters. It talks about the video games. Um, I only own, in terms of Ghostbusters, the video game, the Wii version. And frankly... I think I like that one better. Only because you can use the Wii remote and thrash the ghost around with your Proton one. That's nice. Uh, this came out, I believe, only last year. Ghostbusters, the ultimate visual history. Um, again, if you're a Ghostbusters fan, you kind of want to get your hands on this. It is beautiful. I'm not going to go to every page as well. But look, it's just gorgeous. And it goes through the creation and development of all the Ghostbusters films. There's some nice little things in here attached as well, like a little storyboard sequence, which you can have a look at. Uh, based on the early script. All these little things that are stuck in the magazine that come with little business cards and what notary. Uh, again, talks about through the films, goes into detail there. Uh, and, you know, all the way through to Ghostbusters 2 and even tackles the reboot ever so slightly as well as the cartoon series. So there's lots to enjoy. I mean, if you're a Ghostbusters fan and a, and a bit of a loony like I am, you kind of know all of this anyway, but it's nice to have. A proper beautiful bit of objet d'art, as they say. Um, what notary is a good name for an Etsy store? Yeah, I might do that. <laughs> and again, Extreme Ghostbusters. Don't remember too much about it, but I do remember being basically impressed by how mature, without that ruining the phrase, it was. Because there's some dark topics tackled in the uh, Extreme Ghostbusters cartoon. Because um, the real Ghostbusters started off in the same vein, but then I think it got really, really really childish towards the end when Slimer became the focus and it all became a little bit, um, I don't know, based around Slimer and there's wacky hijinks in the Sedgwick Hotel. So there you go. It's a great big book. It covers everything. Absolutely bloody everything you could ever want and need and desire about Ghostbusters. You know? Lovely stuff. So that's a book that I own. What else have I got? Oh, there's my ID card when I got Ecto-1 where I used to live um, <laughs> years and years ago oh look a toy thing for Ecto-1 where did that come from oh bloody Nora I'm finding all kinds of stuff today viewer right let's get through this oh it's been half an hour already okay so I kept this because I wanted to keep it because of the firehouse and everything so there's a book of how to build a Ghostbusters firehouse using Lego. It's a nice thick wedge, but it has got some nice things at the beginning for you to enjoy. Um, what else, what else, what else? Where shall I start? Okay, well, IDW are doing a really good job of taking care of the Ghostbusters franchise. So this is where the real Ghostbusters meets the in-canon movie universe Ghostbusters. And it's fun. It's not the best plot, if I'm being honest. And even though I'm enjoying Ghostbusters 101 right now, again, not the best plot, but the characters feel right. It's beautifully drawn. And it's nice to see old and new. It's nice to have all the universes come together. You know, that's what I like. There shouldn't be a separation between that Ghostbusters and my Ghostbusters and your Ghostbusters. It's it's all the same shit. It's all about a bunch of people who carry proton packs around and catch ghosts. It's a very adaptable property. So get off your high horse, haters. Um, again, Deviations. Uh, this was a comic book that came out that kind of said, what if, what if we lived in a world where the Ghostbusters never cross streams? Well, this answers it. And again, it's cute. But it's stupid story. <laughs> it really is a daft plot, but it's cute. It's a nice what if. Um, so that's worth getting your hands on as well. 
Uh, when it comes to Ghostbusters books about the film, this is the big one. This is the one most people wish they could get their hands on. Making Ghostbusters. I got given this a long, long time ago. It's the screenplay based on the shooting script. So it's not really going to talk about too much the uh, all the different initiations of it before it was made. But this is beautiful. Again, it's got most of the stuff you'll find in the visual guide. It's got all that, but it has got the annotated script. It's got tons of behind the scenes artwork and drawings and pictures. And just, just like this, that Slimer could have looked like that, which looks like Audrey too. So if you want to enjoy, you know, the script with annotations to certain parts of the story and where the ideas come from, this is almost like a written movie commentary. It's, it's quite fantastic. Paul, what was the original Ghostbusters TV show? Yeah, that was the one with the gorilla in an outfit. Um, it was very pantomime -y. Two old guys and a gorilla chasing ghosts. It, it's kind of that silly. So when the cartoon version came out by Filmation in the 80s, um, it was the next generation of um, Ghostbusters and a new gorilla that went chasing around Primeval, I believe was the villain. That's what uh, Goza could have been. Had it not been a Marshmallow Man, a big skeleton leader in thing that I think ended up forming into the Marshmallow Man. I'm not quite sure. But again, when it comes to um, lovely bits of Ghostbusters memorabilia, this, this is the book. I wish it was in better condition. But again, when you move around, oh dear. Weren't the ghosts in the Filmation series actually robots or something? Some were, Ashen. Some were, some weren't. Um, because it was Filmation, it was like, look good first, make sense later. And so I believe they are all a mix of some were robots, some were ghosts. It all depended on the plot, but it, you know, ultimately, um, I enjoy it. I'll be, I enjoy Filmation's Ghostbusters. It's cute and adorable and daft. You know, it, it works for me. So there you go. My making Ghostbusters book. Oh, that is the gold standard. That one is the gold standard. Right. Oh, my God. God, I've got more crap. Oh my god, how have I got all this crap? Okay, kid's book. The Real Ghostbusters Ding Dong Dodger, which in itself sounds like a porn film, but is not. It's a cute little adventure with the Ghostbusters chasing after a ghost who likes to ring the bell and piss off. So basically, it's The Real Ghostbusters dealing with teenagers in the 80s. Look at my drawing skills. Aren't they good? Not a bad act. Don't want that. Paul Gannon. Yeah, that's me. Rawr. Firehouse. Proton gun. Ding dong dodger. Okay, Ghostbusters are apparently at a recording studio because that's what they do. God almighty. She gets out the shower. Blam, boom. That's okay. I didn't really know what... This is interesting. Paul, if you could change one thing about Ghostbusters franchise, what would it be and why? I would change all of the plot of Ghostbusters 2 because it's too damn similar to Ghostbusters 1. I mean, for all the people who complained about Ghostbusters reboot, the, uh, um, you know, answer the call, at least, I mean, don't get me wrong, the basic structure of all three films are the same, but at least at Ghostbusters um, answer the call. The tech was different. They destroyed ghosts. There was a nice idea about, you know, using technology to make and capture ghosts. So it kind of looked outside the box in some respect. However, in Ghostbusters 2, it was just, oh, here's the same, but now we have mood slime and squirty cannons. So... Yeah, you know. I had a friend who worked in a video shop, so when the videos came in of Ghostbusters 2, my friend put this aside for me. It's a VHS cover of Ghostbusters 2, uh, Spick E Man. And the great thing about these is they always tell you how to market the film. So you've got, like, that's the category, they're the director, yeah, yeah that's, the ca that's the catalog number, VHS, yes, obviously. That's important to note that what it is is correct. Running time, price. That's how much a VHS cost people in the olden days, £60. That's why you had to rent it to get their money back. Reviews. Ghostbusters 2 will leave you in high spirits. The Sun. Great work. Wild and wacky, say the star. A guaranteed good time film to the Daily Mail. And great fun, say the Daily Telegraph. Why are there four reviews here from four of the worst British news publications in the bloody world? Well, in Britain. Uh, synopsis. And it's been trailered on such great films as The Bear, Twice Dead, Wizards of the Lost Kingdom 2. I was going to say I've never even heard of that. But then to find out it's a sequel is even more flabbergastery. So there you go. How to advertise it in your video shop. So that's nice, isn't it? What else? What else? What else? 
Okay, let's get these out. These are the first one of Ghostbusters comics by 88 miles per hour. So limited edition issue one, variant issue two. Sorry about the poor connection, by the way. Did they accuse the movie of having terrorist ties? I don't know. Uh, variant issue one of four, issue three, issue four. Another issue one. All right, I've got two issues of issue uh, of Ghostbusters issue one. If anyone wants that one, get in touch. I might be arsed. So I've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so I do have them all. And it's, um, it's, it's, I believe, the plot without opening these books because, unfortunately, I'm one of those people who will read it once, put it back, and never read it again. Actually, you know what? That's not fair. I'll show what the artwork's like in this limited edition one. The value's going down with every touch of this magazine. So there you go. It's actually quite nicely done. I don't think it's as poppy as the uh, IDW design, but, you know, it's mature, it's adult, it's edgy. It's what the fans want. But I believe the plot of this is... And I might be wrong, because I haven't read it in a while. But someone from Egon's past comes back to try and sabotage the Ghostbusters and brings back Goza. Because, you know, let's tread that into the ground. And I'm enjoying it. I have, I have rooted with my cummy fingers. You have no idea how accurate you might be. I've said too much. But there you go. Uh, nice little comic book slide. I don't know if you can get hold of these easily these days unless you happen to be a connoisseur and know where you're looking. But... Um, that's that. I've got those. Um, and I believe we're finally getting to the end of all this gubbins now. So, when Ghostbusters 2 came out, like with the original Ghostbusters 1, um, it was a making of book. So you could buy this in the cinemas. Uh, and again, I did. Oh, look at that. £2.50 Marvel. So once again, Marvel must have had the right for all publications of Ghostbustery stuff. Um, I prefer graphic novel over single issues. You see, usually I'd agree with you there, Cold Shoulder. Uh, but at the time, I was keen to just have them. I just wanted them, because I didn't know there was going to be a trade paperback somewhere down the line. The real Ghostbusters one I have over there, that tends to be... Um, that was a trade paperback. But I just wanted these. I don't even know if you can get these in a trade paperback. Again, might be wrong. Haven't done the research. But if you can, recommend it. A good read, if not the most original uh, story ever. So, you know, again, just more great behind-the-scenes thing. Look, there's a Scaleri brother... With its teeth, which, you know, frankly, these days, not too different from the inside of my mouth, unfortunately. There's Ray, profile on Dan Aykroyd, where it says, Blues Brothers, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, and nothing else. It might mention my stepmother than an alien, but that's only because it gave me the feels in my pants when Kim Bassinger does that dance for him. Oh. Doctor Who! Back when Doctor Who began and ended with Tom Baker and everyone else could suck it. Howard Ramus, God bless him, miss him to death. Rick Moranis, who is coming back to perform as part of um, oh, Doug and Thingy, Thingy Majig. The, oh my God, why is my brain going blank right now? But Doug McKenzie, Todd and Doug McKenzie, oh, I might be wrong. But either way, he's finally coming back out of retirement. When people always go, why did he retire? It was simple. Um, he made a lot of money from making the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movies and things of that ilk. And then his wife died, and so he decided to give up the acting and look after his kids and bring them up, which he did. He also released a couple of country western albums, one of which I think won an award. So, you know, I'm pretty sure he's fine with his life. And the fact that he's coming back to perform with Dan Aykroyd and stuff like that is fascinating. He has a really good country album out, Alison. I believe so. I've never heard it. As I've never really gone with the country western style musically. Uh, I also have Rick Moranis in my shed. <laughs> just to back up that uh, so you know again it's a lovely little um, lovely little uh, making of book again if you go to Manhattan I took, I took this magazine with me to New York when I went with comedian uh, Richard Sandling and we went to all the destinations obviously the firehouse was the most important one again I'll put a link to all these little videos down there so my BBC3 pilot I'll put a link to me seeing the firehouse and I'll also put a link to my solo Ghostbusters show as well right 45 minutes we're nearly at the end. We're nearly at the end. I promise you. Bloody Nora. I didn't expect it to be this long. I think this is it. This is the final one. Mad Magazine. In this issue, we slime Ghostbusters 2. Cold Shudder. We will do more vids with Eli. Unfortunately, me and Eli live in different parts of the country. And we meet up to record the podcast and annoy each other. So when we do, I promise you we'll make a video. And we'll make it live next time. So Mad Magazine. 
an institution in America. It was like this and National Lampoon, but this was all based more on, you know, cartoon satires of popular films. See, look, there's that guy who's got a character name that I can't remember the name of right now. Uh, with the thumbs down. Very witty. But anyway, Mad Magazine. Grossbusters 2! And quite a few pithy things to be said. So what made you choose the dangerous line of work? I'm fascinated by terrifying occurrences that people can neither understand nor explain. Yeah, like what? Like Dan Quayle being vice president. Oh, you see the satire was very on point. So basically you get a, a snarky version of the plot of Ghostbusters 2. For some reason, uh, oh no, not Godfather 3. Please, somebody do something. Okay, feet, do your duty. Why did you say that? Because that's how we get our electrical power, by scraping our feet on the carpets. <sighs> yeah. That gag wouldn't fly these days. <laughs> so, uh, that's it, I think. There are a few little bits and bobs scattered around. My video game collection is in another box, in another house, in another part of the country. But in there, I've got the uh, Ghostbusters game for the Game Boy. Uh, real Ghost, no, not real Ghostbusters. It's Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters 2 for Game Boy, uh, which is different from another Ghostbusters 2 game that came out for the NES system. So there was a difference. One was a top-down kind of Zelda-y looking thing, and the other one was a side-scroller, and it was bloody awful. The top-down one, very good. Two Ghostbusters at the same time. It, you know what it was like? It was like cannon fodder, if you can remember that, but with a slightly more Zelda-y feel to it. I've also got uh, the Amstrad game. I've also got the Ghostbusters 2 Amstrad game somewhere. And also I have um, uh, the uh, Wii and the Xbox version of Ghostbusters the video game. So I wanted both versions for balance. And that's it, I think, ultimately. Um, I think that's all I can tolerate. And I'm surprised you've managed to tolerate it for as long as you have. So with that in mind, let me just switch the camera around. Thank you very much for joining me on Ghostbusters Day for my collection of Ghostbusters memorabilia, all my books and stuff. You can see part one. I don't know how YouTube works. Somewhere, but you, in that first video, I go through um, my plastic toys and badges and things like that. Uh, follow me at Paul Gannon Show or my podcast, The Cheap Show, which is a podcast where me and Eli Silverman go for the bargain bins, charity shops and thrift stores of the world and find out if there's anything good to enjoy or horrible to avoid. We've got two episodes coming out soon and something special coming out tomorrow. Ooh. So um, happy Ghostbusters Day, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, like, subscribe, rate, review, you know, all. Um, I don't think I said hey guys once, which is a common trope of YouTubers and it gets on my knob end. So with that in mind, I'm gonna wrap up. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for supporting Cheap Show. Uh, go to our website, thecheapshow.co.uk. I've been Paul Gannon. Me and I got some podcasts coming up over the next few months. And that's all. Au revoir, my friends. Au revoir. Na, 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 na. Let's end with this. Right, no, shut up. Shut up. <laughs>